Hi everyone, Doug here. Welcome back to yet another board game channel and yet another episode of Mansions of Madness, second edition, where we continue to try to discover what lies within. I'm quite certain this fire is going to be the death of us because I don't think we're going to get that put out, but we'll see. Uh, I think we're just missing one more key to get us through this very important, heavily locked door there. I think we need a brass key somewhere. So we're going to do a little exploring this turn to try to uncover that. So we'll get right into it with the investigator phase. Okay, going to start with... Kate, she's going to have to spend a turn picking up the Ritual Dagger because this is a very useful thing, if I can remember to use it. So, first action will be picking that up. Second action, we will move her a couple of spaces. One, two. Get her into this hall to do some exploring. Uh, next up, we'll... Just move to Preston right away, who is going to move one. He could check the whispers in the cabinet, uh, but I think I want to check out the, there's a bedroom behind that door. And I think I want to see that before anything else. So for his second action, he will explore this door leads to the bedroom of the house. The bedroom is significantly more homey than the rest of the mansion. The furniture here looks comfortable and well-worn. Um, right, I will just grab the appropriate tile. Alright, there's the bedroom, and interestingly enough, they had us add a door here, so there may in fact be more to investigate past it. Um, a frighteningly large knife has been left on the desk next to the remains of some kind of snake. Lovely. Uh, so we will be putting the meat cleaver, which we saw in our prophetic dream version of the game. <laughs> Can do two damage. Uh, you may suffer to face down horror to convert all investigation signs to successes. So that is on that little table there. The bed is rumpled and unmade. Apparently we can search it. And next to the bed, a screen door leads out into the backyard. We have quite a large yard that could be exposed throughout this. And let's see, a trunk at the foot of the bed could be placed against the door. Let's try to find another barricade. I saw one a second ago. There it is. So, it's a barricade in that space. You may move one space into the explored area. Well, let's go ahead and do just that. He also has one more space of movement, so we will go ahead and put him in there and maybe he can um, examine both of those tokens on his next turn. All right, that leaves us with Bob, so we'll swing around and uh, see what we'll do with him. Well, there's Bob. Don't want him to just wade into rooms filled with fire, at least not yet. So I think uh, first action, we will have him move two spaces. Second action, he may as well pick up the Shriveling Spell. Keep that in his possession. Alright, um, 
Yeah, that's it for the investigators. Now we, yes, have to move on to the dreaded mythos phase. All right, into the mythos phase, and yes, we need to make the fire grow. There's still one more space in the lounge that we can have it spread to before it starts coming into the lobby. I just hope we don't need to get out of here once we've done what we've, uh, what we've set out to do, because we're going to have to run through fire if we do. From nowhere, the distorted sound of an elderly man's sobs deafens you to all other noise. Slowly, you realize that in between the sobs, the old man is pleading with you by name to leave this house. Each investigator suffers two horror. Ooh, face up. Uh, which we can negate. With will. Now we will start... As always with Preston, uh, with a will of three. Hey, he blocked them both. Didn't even have to use a clue. Wonderful. Bob has a will of four, and he still has the Holy Cross, which lets him roll an extra, so he'll be rolling with five. He blocked. Didn't have to use his clues, and that leaves us with Kate, who has a will of three and unfortunately does not have any clues on her at the moment. Well, uh, she blocked one of them anyway. So we will draw a horror card and give that to her. Oh, we're in luck. It's another minor shock. No additional effect. Flip the card over. So it's given her two horror damage. But that's still not too bad. A draft blows through the house, and you can hear an otherworldly commanding voice on the wind summoning an unknown beast. Uh-oh. The voice brings with it flashes in your mind of some unearthly plane intermixed with visions of a dirt floor and stone walls. Again, each investigator suffers to horror, negating with will. Right. Preston with his three. Ah, he only blocked one and can't use a clue. So, I'll reveal his one horror. Flashback. Recent memories claw their way to the surface despite your best efforts. Resolve immediately. Flip one other horror face up. He has none. Then discard this card. Yay! He doesn't have to keep it. Bob will be rolling with five dice again. He did it fine. And Kate with three. Hey, managed to block both. That went, that went very well. Oh, and that is it for the Mythos phase. All right, I will think for a moment and decide what to do for the next investigator phase. Okay, let's start with Preston. I think what we're gonna do is have him search, and then depending on what happens there, also have him explore. Let's get some investigating done. So first up, he's going to search the bed. The bed is rumpled and unmade, blankets twisting and pillows askew. Ah, uh, as an action, I have a choice. I can either make the bed or take a cat nap. I'm, I don't know about the cat nap, given that um, a third of this mansion is in flames. Could get something good out of it. Um, let's try making the bed. Because it, it just doesn't seem like a good time to be taking a cat nap. See all my choices there. Oh, look. You shake out the blankets and set them aside. While removing the pillows from the bed, you find a key. Gain the brass key unique item. You put the bed back together neatly. The, 
Uh, the rote, mundane nature of the activity allows you to brush away intrusive thoughts, become focused. Well, that beats a cat nap. Because he found what I am pretty sure is the final required key. Our brass key. As you hold the key, you look around for a matching doorknob or padlock. No, it's rooms away. And find to do from the status deck. Here we are. Preston is focused. You may discard this card to convert all investigation tokens or symbols to Elder Sign success when resolving a test. Now, before I have him do a second action, what we're going to do, because I think that is the last required key, is we're going to tap this Explore token to see what it says. Yes, we will be able to open that door. We just, um, I think we'll need to get, gather all the keys together and head there. So, let's see. Preston has the cult sigil and the brass key. Bob has the silver key. What was the other thing we needed? Brass key, silver key. Oh, yeah. We only needed those three. So, rather than follow my initial plan of exposing that token, I think we're going to go try to meet up with Bob and head towards that door. So for uh, Preston's second action, he will move to, and we will leave it at that. Now, uh, on to our other investigators. Okay, Bob will, for his first action, move two spaces, and then for his second action, we're going to be doing some trading. Um, Preston is being pretty effective through all of this, so I think we're going to give him the silver key. So he has all three of the required keys, and he can go over. He's... He's got two clues. So does Bob, but Preston is also focused, so that could become very useful. I wonder if we want to give him anything else. No, I, I think that's I think that's okay. So that would just leave us with Kate, who for her first action, she's standing right by that whispering cupboard, so what we're going to do is have her, she can either open the cabinet or listen to the whispering, and we're going to listen to the whispering first time through in uh, Kate's dream. Uh, the whispering asked for Preston, so we'll see if it does the same thing. Okay, the intensity of the whispering increases, the faint sound growing stronger, more rapid, until you can finally make out the words. The voice is saying Kate Winthrop over and over. Suffer one face down horror. Yeah. At least it's face down. However, she does get a clue. That's sort of what I was hoping for. Investigating often gives us clues. Well, it's calling for her. She has another action. We're going to go ahead and open the cabinet. Fingers crossed that it gives her something positive. Possibly. You reach out and wrench open the cabinet door. At once, the neatly stacked china inside rattles noisily and the whispering ceases. Inside the cabinet, you find nothing other than the fine china. You move to close the door, only to find deep scratches on the inside panel spelling the words, Get out. Suffer two face down horror. She can try to she can negate it with her will, but she will then gain another clue. 
Right. I'd forgotten that's what happened with the cabinet last time. It's, it's all a little hazy. So, she will be testing her will of three... Oh, wow. Complete and utter failure. She can't even use a, that clue that she just picked up. So that gives her another two face down horror. One, two, three, four, five. She's at five, which leaves her with three sanity. Um, Bob might be able to fix that a little bit next turn. All right. Hi, all our investigators have two clues. That's nice. All right. Uh, yes, that is everybody's actions. So now, yes, we will be going into the mythos phase. All right, first things first. Yes, the fire spreads. Well, let's have it go right there into that part of the lobby. It's at least not completely blocking the exit yet. What else does it do for us? The objects Preston Fairmont has collected become crushing weights, uh, punishing his tired limbs. Preston Fairmont suffers two damage, negate with strength. For each damage he suffers, he drops one random item. Oh, good. The guy with the keys. Well, he has a strength of four. We have a couple of clues, and we're focused. We may be able to prevent this. Uh, no blanks. <sighs> we got almost all blanks. We got one success, so he is going to take one damage. So we'll do that first. Uh, just a scratch. He thought the wound was much deeper than it is. Resolve immediately. No effect. Discard the card. But now, he's going to have to drop one of these items. This is only one. He, he can pick it up again and... Uh... Alright, so I'm going to shuffle, 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 and without looking, because the backs are different. And then, we're going to flip it over, and whichever one is underneath is the one he drops. He drops the brass key, so he's going to spend going to spend an action picking that up next turn, because we need it. Okay, we get to go straight into the next investigator phase. Okay, I suspect this won't be much of an investigator phase, because we, well, we're going to start with Preston as the first action, picks the key back up. Second action, he will move down the hall. Uh, Kate, I think, actually, what we're going to do, we'll have Kate uh, do one action of moving, and then a, oh wait, no, we're going to have Bob go first, because Bob is going to calm Kate down a little bit, by reading from the King James Bible. As an action, you or another investigator within range may discard one face-down horror. And all of her horror is face-down. And she has a lot of it. So, I think we will do it twice. means we'll be able to get rid of two of the horrors. So he reads to her for a bit, and he reads to her for a bit more. That's getting rid of that. Now she's only got three horror. That's good. We don't want to go insane. It's just, it doesn't cost, cause us to lose right away, but it can make things really awkward. Now, Kate We'll move two spaces, and for her second action, we'll do another move. I'm going to put her there, put her there, and see, um, have her examine the library. 
think there it says something about right the shelf is almost empty books are strewn all over the floor perhaps you can figure out what happened I'm guessing it's going to take a high observation to, to succeed as, at that and she has five that however quickly gets us through that investigator phase so we will do one more mythos phase before we wrap up the episode right the fire which way do we have the fire go it's not really anything good gonna have it go here as well depends on whether or not we need to actually exit by the front door or not when we're done well yeah I will put it there either way we'll have to pass through fire if we do need to get to the front and if we do want to explore a little bit more over there we can just go out through the um, the back entrance and into the yard so yes the fire spreads almost every door on the estate bangs open and closed distracted by the cacophony uh, you do not notice the ground of the estate swelling into a wave that knocks you backward each investigator suffers one damage and one face down horror we can negate with agility then each investigator moves one space towards the lobby into the fire awesome okay well let's check the damage first that we're going to try to mitigate with agility Preston has four agility oh pulled like a boss there got four successes Bob has three agility nothing that's going to improve that well he can use a clue to give him two successes and prevent any damage of any type. Finally, Kate also has an agility of three. Oh, and she'll have to use both her clues to prevent taking damage. That's mostly what clues are for. So I don't think we'll actually need them to solve any puzzles in this, I think. All right, so we prevented any damage. However, everybody moves one space toward the lobby. So Preston will move there. Kate will move there. And Bob, yes, gets pulled in here. I guess I should have put the fire there. And he takes, I believe it is face down damage for the fire. Um, let me just double check. Yes, you do take a face down damage for entering a space with a fire token on it. So, here we go. Bob has uh, just four physical health left, which is not too bad, I guess. Uh, does anything else happen? Oh, yes, something else does happen. The floor creaks under an unseen figure, the sound of its footsteps echoing in the empty house. In response, something keens quietly in the cellar. No, we haven't found the cellar, have we? Maybe it's behind that door. A moment later, a ghostly middle-aged man with his arm missing below the elbow appears pacing the bedroom. We will place another person token back in a sec. All right, our ghostly figure is back at a different age again. Sure, yes, the other side is female. All right. Well, that will give will give us something else to do. Maybe we'll get more information. 
from our victim. Oh, and we're still not done. Summoned by an unknown power, a strange creature crashes through one of the house's windows. Spawn Amigo, as indicated. I'll be back again. All right. There's our Amigo, or is it my go? I'm not sure. I should find out how to pronounce that. It is a flying monster, so it can move through impassable barriers. Uh, that'll be any dotted lines, which we don't really have any of in the house, just out by the pond. In our description, the thing's crustacean-like body has sets of paired appendages and thin fluttering wings, and it is topped with a massive antenna in place of a head. Yeah. All right, it appears there. So I'm pretty sure I know what's going to happen next. Yes, the Migo moves up to two spaces to be within range of as many investigators as possible. It can only be within range of a single investigator, the way things are, because they're all in, th they're in three separate rooms. So in fact, staying where it is puts it in range of as many as possible. In this case, Preston. It then attacks the investigator within range, who has suffered the least damage. Again, we only have Preston. The monster attacks. The bizarre crustacean holds up a small silver teardrop shape, which suddenly crackles and arcs blue lightning into your body. Suffer three damage. Negate with strength. Preston has a strength of four. Well, he blocked two naturally. Um, so we will spend one of his two clues to make it three. So he prevents all damage. Preston's pretty tough. But now... Uh, yes, Preston now is stuck doing a horror check with an ego. A piercing bzop. Yeah, there it is right there. B triple Z A W P. Bzop. Echoes from the creature become dazed. Ugh. Means he's not going to be able to spend clues uh, until the end of his next turn. Oh well. Skittering to face you, it seems that though its chittering buzzing drone, that through its chittering buzzing drone, the creature is attempting to speak to you. Test observation, and we need a success of two to pass. He's only got three observation can't use his clue. Not that it would matter because he rolled one success and two blanks. So, if you pass, it didn't happen. If you fail, there is something profound and worrisome about the creature's unceasing regard. Suffer one horror. Oh, we are getting very lucky on, on these because it's another minor shock. No additional effect. Flip the card face down. And that will finally conclude our final mythos phase of the episode. Boy, a lot happened in that one. We had fire. We had to deal with the mysterious goings-on where we all got pulled back a space. A ghost appeared and a monster showed up and attacked. That was busy. All right. I hope we're doing okay. It's so hard to know. Well, thanks very much, everybody, for watching. Uh, thanks for everybody subscribing. <laughs> I broke 100. Yay. Um, thanks very much for liking, both on YouTube and Board Game Geek. It's very much appreciated. And I'll see you next time when we play yet another few turns of Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. So long.